When doing constructor injection, it's not always straightforward. There's a number of issues you can run into, and there's there's ways, there's, uh, I guess, mechanisms that Hilt has built into it to work around these issues. Because essentially, you always want to do constructor injection whenever possible. You, you basically don't want to do field injection if you don't have to, because it kind of defeats the whole purpose of doing dependency injection. You want those dependencies to be passed through the constructor so that you know what those classes need when they get instantiated. That's like the most important thing about dependency injection. So in this video, I'm going to run through two examples of situations when you want to do constructor injection, but you can't. There's there's issues that, that you have and they need solutions. And then in the next video, we're going to look at those solutions. So here I have an example kind of set up. I have some class and I have some, some dependency down here. Uh, I'll have a link actually down below so you can copy this code. I just copied it from this gist. So just grab the gist that's down below in the description. Just copy literally all of this and then just uh, you can just paste it in and you'll be looking at exactly what I'm looking at. So get that and then um, I'll actually just, just pause the video, get that, get that code into Android Studio and then you'll be ready to go. Okay, so what we have here is kind of like the very first example that we looked at, we have some class. This class is marked with inject, so it's being uh, created as a dependency. It's taking a argument, so it's being having a constructor injected argument, some dependency, which is this class down here. And this just has a, a function that says get a thing, and then this one says do a thing, and it returns look I got, and it will return whatever that function returns. So it should see look I got a thing. So let's run that, and we'll take a look at the log and just see that that is in fact what we see. Okay, so pulling up the log, let's go to the log cat. That was the wrong one. It says, look, I got a thing, which is what we expect. So now let's um, let's try and simulate the situations that you run into when you want to do constructor injection, but you're not able to. So the first one is with an interface. So if I was to create some interface, so I'm going to scroll down to the bottom here and just do interface, uh, you know, some interface, doesn't matter, some some interface and this comes up all the time because when you're building out your architecture and you're building like your data sources your cache data source your network data source any kind of data sources not even just data sources any kind of classes often almost always what you do is you build you stub out the functions using an interface and then you implement that interface in the class and that's that's what i'm trying to simulate here so function get a thing and that's going to return a string and then what I'm going to do is change this class name to some, some interface implementation. And this is going to implement this interface. So some interface, and now this is going to give me a warning. Uh, it's going to ask me to insert the override function. So pressing alt enter on there, implement members, getting that function, which is that get a thing function. And I'm just going to return a string. So return uh, whoops, a uh, thing, just like it was doing before. So this is pretty much the same as what we had before with the, the previous class. The only difference here is that it implements this interface. This is now an override function. That's, you know, that's basically it. So now if I come up to some class at the top here, so I'll do like some interface implementation, and it's going to uh, it's going to be of type some interface. That's kind of the key here. It's not of type some interface implementation. It's some of some of a type some interface. And this is a scenario that comes up like all the time, constantly. This is how you build out your your caching sources, your network sources, all kinds of different classes. Because that way, when you build your dependency graph, these are generalized. You can build fakes for them when you're testing. And and by the way, I have I have lots of courses on this. I have you know UI testing courses, unit testing courses, clean arc. I have a clean architecture course all on my website for why you want to do this, why you provide the, the interface instead of the interface implementation. And it's because of testing. It's because it makes testing easier. So if you want to know more about that, which I suggest you do, if you want to advance your Android knowledge, or I guess just your programming knowledge in general, because this is a concept that's applied to any object oriented programming language, I definitely encourage you to go to codingwithmitch.com and checking out those courses. Now let's get back to the video. So now inside of our do a thing function, we are going to do look I got and I'm going to do some interface implementation, get a thing. So basically like this looks exactly like we had before. The only difference is we have an interface here. This is implementing the interface, still returning the same thing. So we expect maybe this will function just as normal, but actually it does not. So if I run this, I'm going to get a compile time error and Dagger is going to say that, nope, you cannot do that. So this is one of the scenarios that you run into with when you're trying to do constructor injection, you cannot do constructor injection when you inject an interface. And you know, like I said, this scenario comes up 
all the time. This is like a very common pattern, especially when you, you are doing any kind of test driven development or you're doing writing any tests in general. It's very, very common to mock out whatever functions you need in your interface or in an interface, then implement that interface in the actual concrete class. That way you can build test fakes or you can build mocks or whatever. It's easier for testing. This is something that you definitely like need to do. So that's scenario number one. That's the first issue, which is probably, um, I guess the most impactful, well, not even the most impactful, I guess the other one's equally impactful, but now let's look at that second issue. So the second issue, I actually can't even really make an example with. The second issue is if you try and do constructor injection with like something that you don't own. So like it's from a third party library. So like, for example, if we go to build.gradle, I have this retrofit library in here. I have the JSON converter. What would happen if I wanted to do constructor injection and provide the JSON converter? So if I was like private value JSON, I just wanted to like provide this. This is from a third party library. How do I even create that dependency? Like I can't, like with these classes, I could just annotate the constructor with add inject and boom, I can then do constructor injection. But with this, like I don't own the class. This class is part of a third party library. If I hold down control and click on this, I can't, I can't alter this class. I can't like go in here and like build a constructor. I'm trying to type here. It's not doing anything. So it's literally impossible for me to uh, create a dependency like I've been doing. So we need to use one of these workarounds that Hilt has built for us. And this is the same kind of thing that we were using with Dagger. Oh, I guess I'll just show you that this doesn't work just so we can, just so you see that it doesn't work. So I'm gonna comment out this dependency. Uh, I'll just like, I don't know, get rid of this. I'll comment this out. Just do like return uh, something just to show you that this does actually throw a compile time error. So I'm trying to insert a dependency that he, dagger has no idea how to create. So if I run this, I should see a compile time error and there's that compile time error. So that's going to be it for this video. And in the next one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the different ways that we can solve these problems. So there's a couple types. Um, but I don't want to get into it now. I want to, I want to stop this video. And by the way, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you can watch it on my website and it will actually keep track of your progress. So you can just go to my website, codingwithmitch.com, register an account. It's completely free to register and also to watch this course. And that way, when you watch the videos, it will keep track of your progress in the videos and also keep track of what videos you've completed and give you like a little green check mark when you've created, uh, completed a video so that it's easy for you to keep track of that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.